In the historical city of Savannah, Georgia, I visited Sorrel Weed House to see if ghosts are real. Currently, I am walking to the Sorrel Weed House. I don't believe in ghosts, but I do have hopes to someday see one. Or I just think it'd be cool to see one, you know? So I decided to check out and take the tour of the Sorrel Weed House at night. And I was just gonna try to see if we could feel or see anything interesting to change like my viewpoint on spirits and ghosts and stuff. Let's read some history about the Sorrel Weed House. Sorrel Weed House was built in the early 1840s and designed by noted architect Charles Kluski. The house was built by Francis Sorrel, a wealthy plantation owner who was originally from the West Indies. He married soon after he emigrated to the United States, pairing with a young woman named Lucinda Moxley, who was just 17 years old. She was from an extremely wealthy family which did business with Francis. Unfortunately, Lucinda died just five years into the marriage in 1827. Two years later, Francis was joined in matrimony again, this time marrying his dead wife's younger sister, 23-year-old Matilda, in 1829. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Francis's shipping business grew exponentially during this time period. He quickly rose to be one of the city's most prominent and wealthy men. However, Francis did have his vices. He had a long ongoing affair with one young slave girl in particular named Molly. Supposedly, Francis arranged for Molly to have a special quarter set up above the carriage house so that they could have their lover's tryst in private. However, they were discovered one night by Matilda Sorrell. Enraged by her husband's infidelity, Matilda committed suicide by leaping from the second story balcony of the house, bashing her head against the flagstone courtyard. A few weeks after this grisly death, the slave Molly was found in the carriage house, hanging from a noose, and yet another alleged suicide on the grounds. So there's a lot of dark history behind this haunted house, but obviously this is normal for most houses with ghosts, right? First we entered a courtyard where we like checked our tickets and stuff. Uh, it was like $20 so not bad and there were everyone else was like with their family or their couple and I was just alone so <laughs> um, but it was fine. Um, it was windy, it was pretty dark but it was whatever. And then we were led by a tour guide, Sarah. She was very nice and funny and we lined up against the brick wall. My name is Sarah, and I'm going to be your tour guide tonight, or your ghost host if you're a Disney fan. And then she gave us instructions, specifically about uh, one specific instruction was to put away your like dangly jewelry just in case, because uh, the one of the ghosts might steal it. So that was pretty interesting. If anyone here has any loose or dangly jewelry that they're particularly fond of. I would recommend either taking them off or keeping track of them throughout the course of our tour today. And I'm getting a few weird looks. Let me explain. The reason I give people this tip is because this is a haunted house. And we have a little bit of a ghostly jewelry thief who is hiding somewhere on the property. And I do not want anyone to lose their case today. I didn't have any, so we just kept going in. And we went in. And the first room we went in was the study, I believe. I, or, I don't know, I forgot. There we just kind of learned about the history of the house itself. Now, uh, before I get further on into the ghosts, I'm gonna talk about the best thing in this whole house. It's history. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you don't have to pretend. <laughs> I get it. It's... Now, I do want to say one thing. Life expectancy was not the greatest back then. You see, even though she herself gave birth to eight children, only five of them actually lived to see adulthood. Now, one of the children who passed away was one of the children. She died right here on property to Scarlet Fever. Ghost hunters came here and filmed their very first Halloween special right here on our property. And while here, they captured what is considered to be one of the most substantial pieces of evidence in the paranormal field. And they captured this in the form of an E, B, We went on to the next room, the men's and ladies room or something that's called. It's like the party rooms, but there's two and they're very, they're separated where it's like the men's and the ladies are separated into both rooms for some reason. And they would even sometimes like close off the, the wall. And what better way to show off your pretty fancy rooms than by throwing a 
Sorrell your party. You see, during this time, the Sorrell Weed House was the party house. Now, to close them out, they would actually separate the two genders. So the men would stay in this room, while the women would go over there into that room. They would even close these pocket doors here to further separate the two. Thus, earning these rooms the titles of gentlemen and ladies' parlors. We have guests say that they can still hear those parties happening today. This includes some people hearing footsteps in these rooms, or laughter and talking, even though these rooms are empty. And most famously of all, we have had some guests say that they can hear music coming from this lovely piano here, even though you're not allowed to touch it, let alone play it. And learned about one of the images and the ghost sightings. I think that was a picture in the mirror. Um, I don't know about. I don't know. This really, the picture really does look like just some random person that was like just sitting, standing in the doorway. And a lot of it could be like explained like really easily, like how the door is, like just, in a way where it looks like it's part of the shadow because it's like really dark still. So I think it could have totally been possible, but like, you know, it's still kind of interesting and I don't want to be like the annoying person. So I just was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Now the first photo that I have for you all today was taken by a group straggler. Now while everyone else on this particular tour left through the ladies parlor, this gentleman standing here. He stood right here and looked in the mirror to take his picture. When he took a peek at the photo, he very quickly noticed wasn't the last person in this room. It opens inwards, not outwards. And if the door was actually open, you'd be seeing it right now on either side of that door right there. But you don't. So that door is for a fact 110% closed. Now there are a few theories as to who this could be. The first theory is that this is Matilda, the lady of the house. This is one of the most popular theories for this photo because the spirit in question has similar features to the various photos and paintings of Matilda that are scattered in the house. There are a lot of like nice like decorations and everything, but also apparently there was also a picture taken with two young girls with a ghost or a whoever. Um, in the middle of them it looks pretty creepy but it also does look very possible next photo was taken in 2016 by a man who came here with his two daughters now when his daughters walked into this room they absolutely fell in love with him so they asked their father to take a picture so he had his daughter stand right up here looking into the mirror behind him very similar to our last photo and he took their picture but when he showed his daughters the photos he took of them, they cried and they asked to leave. So I'm going to start over here and make my way around. The two girls are in white and there's something very odd standing in between. So good luck for those of you over here, close to the mirror. <laughs> So I also took a few pictures in the mirrors um, just to see if I could get anything, you know? I don't think I got anything, but um, I got a mirror selfie, so... <laughs> Then we moved on to the basement where it was completely dark except for like a few like fake candle lights and like stuff like that so I don't know in the footage if you can really see anything uh, except there were also red lights too but um, but you can probably just look around and you just need to listen honestly. And feel free to use those Now, as it stands, is how it was back then. Very dark, with low, minimal lighting. Now, a lot of people believe that the haunting of the Sorrel Weed House started with the Sorrel family. But that's actually not true. The most prominent members of these, of these homes aren't actually the progenitors of the spirits. The beginnings of a lot of spirits for homes like these is actually the ground and the soil 
that these homes are built on. And this house has quite the colorful history before it was even built. And to talk about that history, we are actually gonna make our way over to the other side of the staircase, close to where that history actually happened. So if y'all were to go outside this big window right here, you can kind of see it, you would hit Madison Square. And in Madison Square, the bloodiest hour of the Revolutionary War took place during the Siege of Savannah. Now after that battle, there was actually a mass grave made for the patriots who died in that very square. Modern architects who turned it into what it is today even reported finding human remains. Now, what does that have to do with the Cyril Weed House? Well, you see, during that time, the land that the Cyril Weed House was built on used to be the British officers' barracks. And we have reason to believe that if we were to pull up this floor beneath our feet, we might find some of those soldiers and officers resting in the dirt below. Now, it is because of this history we attested to the presence of some of our residents. There wasn't too much there. There is supposed to be a shadow man in like one of the aisles or just that uh, just walks around the whole area, I think. Including our most famous resident of all, Shadow Man. Now, Shadow Man is a seven to eight foot tall shadow figure that looks as if he has just been peeled off the wall and given three dimensions. He is most commonly seen pacing back and forth in this breezeway right back here. The breezeway we so lovingly call Shadow Man's Breezeway. Now it is because of his pacing motion that we believe he was some kind of soldier or officer. Though, I do want to mention that he is experienced throughout the entirety of the lower level, not just in his breezeway. Some guests report feeling followed down here. Like there's always something standing behind them or moving over them. I have even had some guests tell me it kind of feels like they can feel breathing on top of their head or even hear scratching on the ceiling above. I try to look for that. <laughs> I don't think it got anything. I did feel like there was like like a breath on me but I think that was literally just wind but it could have been something I don't know. Now we are going to make our way over into this room right here. This room is the laundry room or the linen room. Now this is where those up to 15 enslaved did the laundry. When some people walk into the lower level they feel very uncomfortable. Not just because they're standing in a haunted house at 10 o'clock at night in the dark. You see, some people feel uncomfortable because they feel like their senses are being attacked. Or they're even starting to feel a little claustrophobic down here. You see, back then, there would have been these massive parties, and the 15 enslaved would have been down here in the dark, doing their various chores and tasks to upkeep those parties. So this room is the equivalent of an 18th century pantry. It is the dry storage room for the Sorrel Weed House. If you're looking at the medical kit over here, or wheelchair over in that corner, and you're wondering why that's in a pantry, you can thank this man, Dr. Frank Sorrel. Now Frank was a very gifted trauma surgeon. He was considered to be one of the best. But you see, this is the 1800s we're talking about here, people. Life expectancy was not the greatest, mainly because hygiene was not the greatest. They didn't really do sterilization on top of the fact that they didn't really wash their hands back then. So even though Frank himself was considered to be very gifted, he still lost over half of his patients. We uh, talked about uh, the severity of like the history, and luckily no one in the odd or like in the, on the tour was like annoying, and like there were no like annoying teenagers that like just laughed at everything or whatever. So it was, it was good because it was some pretty serious topics. By the way, if if you feel uncomfortable by any of these sensitive topics, just skip to this time slot.
Then we went up into the slave room where the 15 slaves lived, which is crazy because it's like a really compact spot. Now, you all are now standing in the enslaved living quarters. Just a reminder, this is where those up to 15 enslaved and their children did their personal cooking, cleaning, and sleeping. Now this staircase is not original, like I mentioned outside. This was all post war. So the only way in and out from up here was in fact through that upper back. Now these windows are also not original. The only original windows they had up here were this one behind the bed and this one. And they also they made replica slave beds of like the slave beds around the time but we're not they're not even sure that they even had beds at all because I don't know how they would fit. These beds are actually models that have been built recently based on what other enslaved living quarters had during the time. But we're not even sure if the 15 up here even had beds. Now Molly, the slave that we think was forced to do stuff with uh, Francis, had her own room which is very interesting, just so that they could do stuff in there, I think, or Francis could do stuff in there with her. Um, but apparently it's a very sensitive spot. It's, even if you don't believe in spirits or ghosts, it does feel very like emotional or like very like just heartbreaking that people had to go through things like this. Uh, however, the Sarah, our tour guide, uh, said she had a experience where she just felt like terrible and like cried after going in and she never wants to go in again because it really just traumatized her the Sorel Weed House is right here. Um, it was pretty interesting. I didn't feel anything. Honestly, oh, I did feel like a little like breath, but I'm not sure if that was just like the wind or something like that. But other than that, I thought the stories were fun and interesting. I don't know if I expected that. It was an interesting experience. I do want to look at more um, so, uh, haunted houses and like haunted areas and just investigate them maybe one day we can do like the ghost hunting thing with like all the devices and stuff uh just because savannah has a lot of those places so i want to check them out the tour was interesting it was fun so maybe i'll yeah i'll definitely do some more in the future is thanks to sarah our tour guide and you guys for watching yeah. Yeah.